welcome to the Gotham Outsiders, your Batman breaking news club today. I am your host, Bat Obsessive Chris, and with me as always, my co-host TJ. Hello, everyone. I am your Batman acolyte, and we have some really exciting news today to discuss. Yeah, and with us to completely fan out over this exciting news, we have the amazing host of Talking Comics, Steve Say. Hey, that's me. Very excited. (laughs) You hear it in my voice. Oh, my God. Yeah, we had to have you on because you and I were messaging each other today, excited, and... um, everyone else was like tentative and I was like no we gotta celebrate (laughs) yeah it's totally I was at work all day until like an hour ago so Chris wrote me and I don't know if you saw but I read your message and then didn't reply for like two hours because I was I was really busy I was like oh you're gonna think I left you on red I did um, I did I was like TJ I was screaming at you about Davey and Wayne for like two right. hours completely so, in a vacuum <laughs> i haven't had time to like digest this and talk about it so i'm really excited to do it for the first time with both of you yeah, i but- had a friend that i haven't spoken to in 10 years reach out to me <laughs> last night and knowing what was going to happen today i haven't responded to them yet <laughs> because I've, I've been like i can't handle the emotional weight of both things <laughs> and this one is already in motion they're gonna have yeah. to wait yeah, yeah. T- talk to us about that journey what, what have you been going through steve so um the people that don't know me i write for joeblow.com um i normally handle news i do features and videos and other things um we were very fortunate to attend a meeting with James Gunn, which is how all of this information got relayed to uh, certain members of the press. Uh, We had an in, we got in there, it was very cool. But what that did was it gave me access to all of the information and all of the details, Um, not exactly 24 hours early, but early, like 5.30 the day before. So- I basically was under like an understood NDA with my site and my boss. Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't talk about anything to anyone. We're keeping all of our articles offline. Don't put anything in the back end. If they're not in the inner circle, they don't get to know the whole thing. So not only am I living with this knowledge that, Regardless, I was saying to Chris before we started recording, regardless of how you feel about the news and whatnot, Mm -hmm. industry-wise, this stuff is a really, really big deal. Yeah, Mm -hmm. 100%. You know, this is shaping the next eight to 10 years of the DC universe. This is the reboot of this franchise that didn't go the way that they had wanted it to. Mm -hmm. And like, we'll get into the details of it a bit later, but not only are they rebooting this stuff but they're rebooting it with some very bold moves and some very bold characters and a lot of unknowns for the masses which is who they're marketing these movies to yeah so you know this is the equivalent of sitting on like all those marvel (laughs) announcements that came out with them going all the way up through secret wars and stuff like that yeah this felt like that yeah. You know, and so I'm sitting here and I feel like I'm sitting on a time bomb. Yeah. Because you know that the community is going to go <laughs> berserk when yeah. they learn about all of this. The, you know, the Snyder files are going to come out. They're going to piss all over everything. And it's going to be a whole thing. It's going to smell terrible. <laughs> and so we're recording mm-hmm. the Talking Comics podcast mm-hmm. and we're debating about what to do with the news section because the show doesn't come out until Wednesday. And there was a brief moment in time where I was like, we're not releasing this until Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Can I say anything? Ultimately, the answer was no. And I have to send a shout out to all of my co-hosts because they were amazing. And that from the beginning, before we even started recording, they said, if you're uncomfortable with this, Mm -hmm. which I kind of was, not that I don't love and trust them all, but you know, this is my livelihood. This is what I do. It's my reputation, all that stuff. So I kept it to myself. Nobody knew anything. And we just did a show like we normally would. We're going to try to get back together and do what we're doing tonight. Um, But oh my God, like now everybody knows 
Yeah. I don't have to, I can talk about it. I don't have to worry about anything. Even people that I work with, we were talking in code uh, early <laughs> this morning when I signed in for my shift at like eight o'clock in the morning and I'm talking to my coworker, Alex, and we're like talking around everything because the news hasn't gone public yet. It was only Amazing. after that, that we started actually talking about stuff by name. Yeah. Mm. It was pretty funny. I mean, Very- like, I feel like, so I'm big into spoilers because I have no self-control and I can't help it. Ugh. So I'm like into the Reddit community, not like involved, but I like look at it and just because I'm uh, self-indulgent and can't help myself. <laughs> anyway, Marvel stuff leaks all the time and DC yeah. stuff leaks all the time really yeah. badly. Yeah. So I think everyone kind of expected at least something to leak within the last 24 hours. Nothing did. Nothing did. No. So like, I honestly really appreciate it though. Like everyone that was in that meeting, yeah, it just seems like it was very respectful and yeah. everyone was keeping their mouth shut. And I think it made for a really cool fan experience that we all yeah. have yeah. to find out at the same time. So I th- thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I think I think a lot of people, it was a very it was a very close knit, like it, not everybody was invited to this thing. Right. You know, I honestly don't even know how we got in, but we did. Uh, and I mean, we cover a lot of superhero stuff and and we're, you know, we're known throughout the industry and stuff like that. But we're one of the little guys uh, mm-hmm. for all intents and purposes. So but we did get in and um, I think everybody understood the assignment. Everybody knows how important this is for them. And I think a lot of people are rooting for this reboot. Because yeah. who yeah. wants to remain miserable in this franchise? Right. No one. Like, as much as I don't really care for the Zack Snyder approach to some of these characters and to that world, I still want the, the comic book fan in me, the, the fan of these characters, still wants this universe yeah. to do well. And so I'm never going to root against it. No. And that was yeah. kind of my thing today when I saw some of the reactions and when I was gauging like some of the excitement or lack thereof from people about this stuff. And mm-hmm. the thing that I came away with is people are, most people I've seen or talked to are tentative, tentatively excited, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it's coming from a place where people feel burned yeah. by mm-hmm. this franchise and this studio. Yeah, because definitely. the DC world that they've presented for the past decade or whatever the hell it's been, I don't know, uh, has been this like navy blue brown sludgy mess with mm-hmm. characters that mostly don't behave like themselves. There are glimmers, mm-hmm. but it's real fleeting. Yeah, there are In movies my- that stand out, right? Like, oh, of course, Shazam, R.I.P. Zachary Levi, but. Um- <laughs> What a shame. Yeah. I know. I know. TJ and I having to cut him out of those pictures of ALA we took with us. <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah, that was my first thought was, oh, I met you, him. Look. No, I met him. He hugged me. Ew, I'm tainted. <laughs> you didn't no. know. You didn't know. You didn't know. It's amazing how this man. stuff like exists and is out there because some of that stuff is old. Yeah, I know. But some people are able to shed it and go about their every day and like, it takes something like this to trigger those memories and for people to be like, hey, you remember when Zachary Levi was a piece of shit all these years ago? Check yeah. it out. And then yeah, there's like, if you want to be evidence. a piece of shit, just like, don't let me know that you're a piece of shit. Though. Right. <laughs> be a piece Please. of shit in private. That's all like, I ask. Why you're right to be, be a piece of shit. Why just must don't people be so there. vocally a piece of shit these days? Exactly. <laughs> I'll t- I, I know the answer to that question, but I don't yeah. think we want to go there. It's fair. Like we could, answer. we could, and everyone could go listen to our toxic fandom episode yeah. if you really want to get into it. I think a lot of people <laughs> were emboldened uh, yeah. not too long ago, and now the gloves are off. Yeah. And... Why, why, Steve? Was there something significant <laughs> that happened lately? Oh yeah, yeah. I lived <laughs> it. I I <laughs> packed my moving boxes to Canada yeah. with yeah. that shit. Some of us escaped, and others of us are in. The- Damn right. place imaginable uh, uh, and that's why there are moving boxes behind me that's right. <laughs> well then we have at <laughs> least 10 things to talk about yeah. today um i wanted to start reading some of the comments that we got i hey. asked some of our listeners if they had any opinions or comments about the news that james gunn revealed today 
Uh, so I'm going to just start going through them. We got yeah. about 10 that I'm going to read. The, the first one is from Queerly Nerd. He says, I think the Superman movie has legacy in the title because John Kent will be introduced. And sooner than later, we will have a Super Sons movie. I hope I hope they're right. Oh my God. I think that sounds like a fantastic idea. I would love yeah. that. It sounds very plausible. The only thing that makes me hesitate is that they keep talking about casting a younger Clark. So like, I'm like, well, how old would he be? I mean, I guess he could be a kid and then age into a teenager and they well, could do Super Sons. Super Sons, he wasn't a teenager. He was 11. So That's that works. Right. So I guess yeah. he could be like four or five and then, oh. yeah. Yeah, I'd be cool with that. <laughs> Sorry, I just got very excited at the idea of a four or five-year-old John Kit. Be amazing. Throw Connor in there. No, nah. uh. we're never going to see him live action. <laughs> Connor, <laughs> as if. <laughs> uh, Tim Drake, nah, him neither. No. He, he ain't happening, come on. No. I'm skipping nope. ahead though. What do you guys think about that comment? Uh, I hope so. I don't know. I mean, I would love to see a, a good Superman movie. Like I really liked Henry Cavill as Superman, but I didn't like any of the movies in which he was Superman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel bad for him that they didn't give uh, him another chance to do a good one, but I'm excited to see who they do cast as long as it's not Chris Pratt. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. And this is like one of the first movies that's coming, right? 2025? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Out yeah. Yeah. Ones. It's going to be. Um, so the release order is Shazam Fury of the Gods, uh, The Flash, Blue Beetle, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, and then Superman Legacy. Right. Yeah. So it'll be like the first new thing. Right. But here's the thing for me. I don't know what to make of the legacy part of this yet because I'm having a tough time envisioning them starting superman's rebooted career in the dcu let me ask you a question is it dcu or dceu okay everyone that screamed at us on twitter for saying dceu so i think it's the dcu but i looked up on the dceu wikipedia page yes like because i figured it would be listed there if they changed it and apparently james gunn keeps saying dc universe and some people are interpreting that to mean that they've uh, renamed it to be DCU, okay. but it right. has not been officially like said. Yeah. I mean, I hope they do because I I would like it to be named yeah, something different. Better. Well, there there but... are two imprints now because there's the DCU and let's call it the DCU, and then there's the DC Elseworlds. Yes, mm, right. So, yeah. um, getting back to my point, what the hell was I saying? Oh, okay. Legacy. I I don't know if I can see them starting Superman's rebooted. DCU career or whatever kind of at the end with John being in the picture at whatever age I just I feel like that might be for the first movie to already start setting that up I can understand wanting to plant the seed of John being there but I don't know if that's where we start yeah I agree I want you to know I resisted the urge to make the obvious planting the seed of John joke (laughs) listen I gotta go there that's why you invited me it is my Uh, other thing would be that the Superman and Lois TV show is doing him as a dad yeah so like are they really gonna do that again so soon I don't know like I would love it yeah me too but I don't know because I Superman and Lois is a great TV show just throw that out there I'm glad they didn't cancel that one yet I don't and know. I'd like, I'd like to see like a, an accurate comic, accurate version of John. I, too. I would too. Like, but I, I, you know, I think the, what we know about it, I guess, is that it's about balancing his heritage and upbringing. Right. So I guess the legacy could be Krypton. Like the legacy is him. That's what I'm thinking. Or his right. dad, human dad. Right. Maybe and his, 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 his legacy. Yeah. Ooh. Both of them. Oh. As long as he doesn't <laughs> die in a twister for no reason. Again, I'm uh... <laughs> Why is James Gunn writing this? We should. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I was, I did, I do have to eat crow a little bit. Okay. Because I had people telling me like, oh, James Gunn is going to be, you know, all over this thing. And I, and I said, I was like, nah, like, they're not going to do that. He's going to be too busy. He's, you know, heading up, co-heading up the company and blah, blah, yeah. blah. I Guys. was wrong. <laughs> he wrote a lot of this stuff and his name yeah. is on a lot of this. I'm sure as like we get into casting and as we get into yeah. directors and stuff like that, we'll see 
more diversity in yeah. the line, but mm-hmm. I was a little surprised by how much his name is on a lot of these projects. Yeah. I do wonder though, how much, I mean, obviously it's like he wrote it, but is it, did he, or is it like he is over head up, head of it? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he might, I wonder if it's more that and like he's the name attached to it now doesn't mean he's the main person I think in each he one. definitely wrote a couple of these i mean that doesn't terribly surprise me but i would i would doubt he you know maybe he's yeah. incredible and he sat down and wrote all of these like he's taylor swift during the pandemic but <laughs> <laughs> well, well we'll we'll get into it as we as we talk right. about the announcements that were made but yeah oh my god i have so many thoughts about this i'm thinking yeah. of him as like a showrunner where like that's what i was they thinking. don't write every episode but do they rewrite every episode in many cases, yes, but they don't get the credit. So, like, they're like the, I don't know. Like, I do think he's going to be, almost, yeah. yeah, he'll be a part of everything. You know, like, yeah. I, I don't know. I think there's going to be consistency because he's going to be a part of everything. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't think he'll be doing like the main portion of everything, but quite a few episodes, if you will, sure. Yeah. Mm. This definitely feels, they all feel very diverse as ideas. So it would be strange for them all to feel the same when they come out, if that makes sense. Where does this leave Michael B. Jordan's Superman project? I read that it's going to be in Elseworlds. Still, oh, really? But I don't, that was through um, Discussing Film. Their Twitter tweeted that out today. Yeah. So I yeah. don't know if that got specifically mentioned or if they're just assuming, but. Well, this is only half of what they have planned for this chapter one gods and monsters phase so it's entirely possible that that stuff is just going to take a little bit more time to cook or they've Mm -hmm. had you know closed door meetings with jordan and been like look you know what's going on you know we're in the shit this is what we're doing to get out of it hopefully um do you mind waiting x amount of years to roll into production that kind of thing mm-hmm. right yeah maybe i'm wondering so. what's gonna happen to like the black canary movie that's written with her reprising her role oh, like, they i'm not expecting that Zatanna it. movie too i, I know. know like i want it so bad but I oh, god i would have killed killed for that Zatanna right. movie emerald yeah. fennel like come on <gasps> oh uh, jesus yeah what a fucking mistake I hope they don't pull a like they did with uh, Black Widow over in the MCU where they put it out like really out of order and thus it doesn't get the like do it deserves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, our next comment is from Christopher with a K. uh, And he says, I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Thrilled to have Bat fam, but scared at Damien's description. Not inaccurate, but I worry he will lean too heavily into it gonna miss our bats i'm not sure if christopher is um, is talking about robert pattinson oh yeah because... our bats no our bats isn't going anywhere what's as our far bats? As we know. oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh, okay whoops. sorry hold on my phone rang okay. my bad that was so You're unprofessional okay. um, so unprofessional oh yeah. my god our bats is is our pats it's batman and no he's not going anywhere as far as we know that movie's still coming out this is just he's not going to be the mainline batman which i don't think any of us thought he was yeah it's, a, it's a, the batman part two and is that coming out in 2025 as well steve uh i don't know if we got a date for that one i don't okay. have uh i don't have any of the else worlds information in front of me actually okay yeah. i that saw was someone of... go ahead I was just saying, I saw someone said we're getting Superman and Batman in 2025, but I know yeah. it's not the it new was, Batman. Yeah, the maybe. rollout of uh, the Elseworlds information was strange. It was kind mm-hmm. of like almost an addendum to everything mm-hmm. else that had happened. Even even the way the news roll out, uh, like we didn't get, I guess maybe they wanted to portion it out because there were a bunch of follow-up stories to all of yeah. these announcements. It was like, by the way, this is what we're doing about Ezra Miller spoilers nothing yeah um surprise, right. surprise. yeah you know the batman 2 part 2 is happening yeah uh that sort of thing but let me see if uh while you're all talking yeah, i'm gonna sure. see if i can find i will something. say yeah don't worry christopher we're still we still got our bats we're just getting a second batman which yeah. i i am so down with i would also say um to the idea of damien being described as like a little hell spawn murder baby that's what we love about him i'm glad james gunn seems to get him he sucks in all the best ways. I love him so much. <laughs> and the Batman movie is called The Brave and the Bold. Yes. I didn't see the word Batman attached to it. So I'm kind of, I like if they don't have the word Batman because we already have the Batman mm-hmm. yeah. coming out. 
And I, it makes me think, all right, well, who's the brave and who's the bold between yeah. Bruce and Damien? Well, is it going to be a Bruce and Damien? I mean, yeah, it said I, Bruce and Damien. Did it? Yeah. No, it said father and son, Batman and Damien. Mm, okay. I don't, I don't think it said Bruce because people, including uh, DC editor Clark Bull, who doesn't know, but I did love that he was speculating, are like, is it going to be Dick Grayson? Because the story that it's based on is Dick and Damien. Okay. Well, they're basing it off Grant Morrison's run, but the image they used was the one with Dick on the cover. Yeah. So, like, but it's like an iconic shot. So I'm like, there's no, there's no way they're starting with Dick. I don't believe it. Like, I, I wish I would love it, but I don't. I think we're gonna get like Batman and Son and introduce Damien, and then like sequel, maybe we'll get Dick. I don't Batman. know. I think it can be done. I hope you're right. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hold out hope. Uh, because if it was Dick and Davian, I will go feral for this movie. <laughs> I'm thinking they're going to adapt like Morrison's entire run in broad strokes okay. and like adapt it and make it better. So <laughs> That's gonna, my hope. <laughs> it's going to be Batman and son, not uh, Batman and Robin is what you Right. Mean. I think they'll do Batman and son and then he'll die, get sent to the past. And then we'll have a movie about like Dick being Batman, but also Batman like I don't know, maybe time traveling. But we're going to get the Western Batman maybe and they'll the do something story different. for Grant Morrison. Like maybe he'll just die or just for some reason Dick will have to be Batman. I don't know. But I would like to see Dick as Batman. I but I feel like we need to see him as Nightwing first. So like in the first movie, introduce him as Nightwing so I can get to like him and then make him Batman. I think it can be done. I think it can be done. I've definitely seen people taking your your side of it like what about the common you know man how are they going to respond and I think that's just like selling people short these days we all learned to fall in love with Iron Man and all of these characters that nobody gave a fuck about in the regular populist right like it can be done you can build it up I think people who are skilled enough could write a Dick Grayson origin story For sure. that doesn't require it to be and like first. if it had to be done like and for reasons I'm thinking maybe they wouldn't want to have two movies that star Bruce like let yeah. our Pats be Bruce if they did do Dick like we could start the movie where Dick is Batman and Bruce is dead yeah. but then we could get flashbacks to That's what him as Robin and with Bruce before it like be throughout done. the film so like it could be done I don't think that's what they're gonna do but I wouldn't be mad if they did that what do you think Steve about what <laughs> do you think they could could they start with dick as batman or do they have to do Batman? well i mean bruce? as far as i know bruce is in the brave and the bold movie mm -hmm. so i don't know in what capacity mm -hmm. dead, <laughs> <He's> dead. <laughs> stuck in the past <laughs> he's just he's running around in a duster in the wild wild west I'm telling let's you. let's put it this way i don't think I don't think you do a uh, a Batman movie, the first like Batman movie in the main line in the DCU. Man, this is going to get so confusing. Give it's like fresh now, <laughs> so we can follow it now. But just you wait. Yeah, is that DC Elseworlds or DCU? Yeah, it's what's gonna... canon? Oh, it'll God. it'll be accurately representing what it's like to read the comics. Then. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you can make a Batman movie without Bruce Wayne being the main Batman. I think you're onto something with the idea of maybe if they're adapting the series, if this is inspired by the Grant Morrison stuff, I could see them planning this as a possible trilogy or at the very oh, least a two parter yeah. and doing the Batman movie first to mm -hmm. establish him, but have those other characters you know, in and around him. And then you do the passing of the torch thing with the next movie and you, you know, mm -hmm. they're gonna, they're gonna want to take that story and make it their own. I don't think any of these are going to be straight adaptions. No. Like they, they made it a Supergirl announcement uh, as a part of this. And I don't think that thing's only eight issues. Yeah. They're going to do more with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes so. sense. So Steve is team TJ. <laughs> I'm just going to But I'm team Chris, because I would love that. <laughs> Me and Clark Bull are going to sit over here hoping against hope. I'm hoping. Season. I just don't have very much hope. Not I just fair. think, I don't know. I feel like they're going to have to do the basic thing. Like, I don't know. I would love for them to mix up the format, though. Yeah, I think it'd be different. exciting if they tried something big. But you're right. Maybe they won't. Who knows? I, I think I if anyone is going to be able to convince WB to go that way, 
it would be James Gunn. And hopefully, that's my thought. Yeah. Sure. Hopefully, that's why they put him in this position because yeah. they realize how much they've painted themselves into a corner. So. And they really do. My problem is, is like they really do need someone radical to break yeah. the cycle yes. and to get them out of the shit that they're in. But when it comes down to it, the investors mm -hmm. and, you know, the fat cats sitting at the top of the tower, mm -hmm. uh, lighting cigars with rolls of money and shit like yeah. they don't know about this stuff. They don't feel that way about these things. Yeah. They're just like, can he run it? Can he do better than the last guy? All right, yeah. fine. Yeah. I'm just saying Suicide Squad by James Gunn was an unusual superhero movie. So maybe we're going to get some unusual ones. I hope so. Yeah, That's I hope so too. Get weird with it. That's what get, I want. Get weird with get hashtag weird. keep DC weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but truly, can we just the thing that we do know about this that I feel like we need to spend a great deal of time just reveling in is we get Damien. <laughs> I, I'm yeah, losing it. I can't yeah. believe it. But that makes I, me wonder: Are we going to get the other previous Robins somewhere? I hope so. But even if we don't, this is already one more Robin than I was expecting. If, I think Tim is a goner. If I'm tempering any expectations for this DCU stuff, it's the Damien angle. Yeah. I listen. I'm so 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 excited. You know how I feel about our boy. I yeah. I love him. He's my favorite. Yes, Robin. The whole thing. He is a fine fine line of a character. You can either do him the right way and do him justice, or you can completely and totally make him insufferable That's in fair. all the wrong ways. <laughs> I don't. I don't disagree. I think. Hmm. Maybe I do have more faith in James Gunn than I think I do, but like I was, that's I was what you like, learned today. This is what I'm learning today. It turns out I was Team Gunn all along, but um, I feel like if they pull off a like five from Umbrella Academy vibe with Damien, we'll be in a good place. Like it's very yeah. doable. Yeah. Like it can be done. I'm worried about how young they're gonna go with him because I'll tell mm. you if they get some like young up-and-comer who wants to just you know piss attitude all over this movie that is going to get under my skin you never know real fucking maybe quick. this is how we find the next stranger things kids you know you yeah. never know i would love to find someone new that i've never seen someone who is you know like has the ethnicity that damien should be i think that yes please I th you know if he if he God. doesn't that's gonna be a bloodbath oh, so my i really God. hope they Hope they you, do it right. Wow, you think that fans were vicious about Scarlet Witch? Wait till they've <laughs> cast a white Damian Wayne. We're Let gonna... me ask you this. When, <laughs> if they're doing Damian Wayne, when do they introduce Talia in that movie? Right. I mean, I that's guess. a lot of ground to cover. See, yeah, I, that's lot. what I'm saying. I'm telling you, I think some of the stuff has to already have happened before the movie starts. I don't think they can cover everything in the movie. There's just going to be like, a Batman movie in all the other movies, just all of a sudden the movie's going to switch gears and be like, it's a Batman movie now. <laughs> the so after credit scene of every movie is yeah. just Talia and Bruce slowly falling in love and having a baby. <laughs> oh my I, I, my ideal movie, which I know it's not going to be it, Please. but if they just did like Bruce and Damien's already with him, yeah. like, you know, we don't even have to really talk about his background, but just, you know, we get the full package of his personality and then Nightwing pops up here and there, but like, what if we do Under the Red Hood? And like, so I don't know, you could have Damien and Nightwing both kind of helping Bruce get through this with the Robin that was failed. And I don't know, wow. I feel like that could be That would be an even harder place to yeah, start. I don't know Are you I kidding? All, I just TJ's want all like, TJ's yeah. like, what if we start in the middle? <laughs> That's what I want. That's not what I'm expecting. I would like you to point out that you told me my idea was too impossible to film. And then you're like, what if we go deeper? It's doable. I think it's it could not, be pulled off. It's not doable in one movie. <laughs> no, it is not. Too much. <laughs> I was just suggesting a different Bruce. You're like five children already in existence. <laughs> That's the other thing. I, I hope that for some of these, they keep things relatively simple yeah. and don't overstuff <laughs> the plots because yeah. the last thing that I want them to think they have to do is yeah. we, we lost, we're losing all of this other history, this former yeah. DC stuff that yes. you know, we've already done. It yes. didn't work out. We have to make up for lost time. So mm -hmm. we're just going to, 
sh- throw everything at you God, to get don't. you into this universe. Don't do that. Simplify the yeah. universe. Make the plots a little bit, you know, more. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say linear because that sounds boring, but just yeah, don't overdo it. I, I was I about that's... to say, sorry. Um, I was gonna say. What if they made Under the Red Hood a Dick as Batman story? But then I realized that's what the Titans TV show already did. I was going to say, wait, have I seen that before? <laughs> no, okay. Here, But here would be your, the first part of your idea, I actually think would be a brilliant way for it to start is it, you know, it starts, Damien's already established. It's like the beginning of his career as Robin rather than like an origin story. Like they are already right. a team. I think that would be a smart way to do it. And then you could have flashbacks to Talia and how he got there and things like that without overcomplicating things. Yeah. All right. Next comment yeah. comes from friend of the pod, JJ. He says, JJ! Definitely looking forward to more Swamp Thing and, of course, a proper Superman and Supergirl. So let's linger on Swamp Thing and Supergirl. For a- oh, my God, Swamp Thing. I got so excited. I was not expecting a Swamp Thing, and it made me delighted. I, I love Swamp Thing. I've been meaning to watch the show that one season for ages. And that was like the like, three episodes that ever came out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, I only got one, but it wasn't super long. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Now I'm kind of like, maybe I'll just wait for the movie. <laughs> well, I told, uh, I guess I told the folks over on Talkie Comics that one of my goals or my New Year's resolutions was to read about characters I didn't know very much about. Mm-hmm. I've only experienced Swamp Thing through his interactions in like the Superman comics. So oh. I, I'm doing a deep dive on Swamp Thing now. The, I mean, everybody's going to tell you to read the Alan Moore stuff. I, don't I like Alan Moore that much. <laughs> this is why I'm recommending the Jeff Lemire run. The Jeff Lemire run, the Swamp okay. Thing, and the Animal Man. Okay. Those, those both, they cross. Okay. They, they, they muck with each other. Yeah, that run is, in my opinion, phenomenal. Okay, see, I tried to read an Animal Man's run. It was Grant Morrison, and I hated it. So <laughs> I just, read, I had, start, start okay. with the Jeff Lemire, Lemire Animal Man. Even just give the first issue a try, and if you're not like, ooh, by the time that that first issue is done. Like you'll know, you'll know okay. after that first issue. Okay. I read yeah. the young adult novel by Maggie Stiefvater because I love her. Is it Swamp mm-hmm. Thing? Yeah, it's a it's a Swamp Thing oh. origin story. Okay. Yeah, it was fun. It's like in the middle of my ranking of the DCYA yeah. books. You know, Did Galaxy you? at the top. <laughs> TJ, I know, right? TJ, remind me because it's been like five years since we started the show. Did you read the, five? <laughs> it hasn't. I know, but uh, did you read the the Swamp Thing issues with Superman when we did our Superman retrospective, or no? It's been a while. I don't, re- <laughs> I don't remember. remember. I don't remember him being in it. Okay. but I could be there wrong. Is, so part of the Peter Tomasi run is a really gorgeous story about Superman and Swamp Thing and protecting the planet. In yep. oh, I love it so much. Oh, I love it so much. So that that's my my Swamp Thing in my brain. Yeah, I'm super duper excited about the Swamp Thing. That was one of the bigger surprises uh, to me, just mm-hmm. because like that had to have been something where james gunn was saying you know we need to do swamp thing i know it didn't work out when we tried to do it last time but we need to give it another go yeah because either i have ideas or someone else has an idea but the thing about swamp thing um it's interesting that there's no event movie uh announced yet there's no avengers in this lineup Mm -hmm. so far that's true but But, and I don't think that this is the case. So when this pans out to not be true, don't come for me. (laughs) But if they're smart about it, the Swamp Thing stuff is massive. Mm -hmm. You have not just Swamp Thing, but you have the whole thing with the green and the red. Mm -hmm. And he has some of the most wicked DC villains that you never see in any other stories. They're only in Swamp Thing. Uh, Maybe they appear every now and again. I don't know. But they could really treat that as an event type movie if they want to introduce the green and the red and then you can pull in poison ivy yeah and you can do all kinds of things with that that if you treat it right it could be an event level solo film or at least it could branch out hey to <laughs> other things in the future 
I keep thinking about the Harley Quinn episode where he is fucking uh-huh. Mr. Freeze's wife. Ah! <laughs> and what? he's really funny. I love Harley Quinn. <laughs> Give me that swamp thing. <laughs> it's, it's not the swamp thing. You're gonna uh, get we're... you're gonna get a creature feature. Yeah. That's... And that's... oh, was it creature? Wait, no, no, no. I'm saying I'm saying different? when this DCU movie comes out, it's gonna be a creature feature. I, oh, okay. I love that though. Like I don't know about you all, but I loved. Actually, I do. I do know about you all because we both talked about it. But I loved the uh, MCU's um, Werewolf by Night, and it would be fun yep. to have that yes. kind of thing with a Swamp Thing story. That's I just I want, want them yeah. like yeah. use use some, if not all, practical effects. Oh, that'd, that'd be so cool. Good. Like for those close up so shots, especially. Don't don't yeah. come at me with this CGI Mm-mm. Swamp Thing garbage. Like yeah, you I can get creature creative from with the it. Black Lagoon going yeah, on. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you know, you can have the ooze and the the flowers blooming yeah. off of him and stuff like that in CGI. But when you get right up in there, like throw some seaweed on whoever you cast at this person, and then just you want the sex scenes in. to be full. <laughs> I I want to I want to smell him ah! from the screen. That's what right up in there. Yeah, <laughs> like a fresh car freshener. <laughs> What's that smell? Is that new car That's smell? No, thing. it's swamp thing. It's just yeah. swamp thing. We want it, We want this movie in four D. We want to be able to smell it. <laughs> All right, Supergirl. Supergirl. This is based on the Tom King run. Is it Woman of Tomorrow? Is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. I've been meaning to read this for like a year. Yeah. So now same. it's it's like jumped up on my list. <laughs> so none of us have read it. <laughs> I well, I read I read the f- uh, first yeah. and second issue. It's positively gorgeous. Bill Quist Everly is the artist. Uh, incredible, incredible artwork throughout. Mm-hmm. It is a very uh, off-putting super girl story at the start. Yeah. She is hungover. She is drinking. She is trying to forget. She's stumbling all over the place. Oh she finds somebody who needs her help and she basically just gives her attitude and doesn't want to be bothered. Aww. It is a very bizarre way to start a Supergirl story. Yeah. Uh, Bob Ryer will tell you all about it. Now I'm intrigued though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the thing is that more than anything, I want I want good but I want different. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. The other shit wasn't working. Yeah, we've talked about this before. Like the ones we liked of the DCEU, or we've talked about it this on Go anyway. Those ones were the ones that took the biggest swings, right? Like, so please continue to take swings. Yeah. I'm wondering, is it going to be the same Supergirl from The Flash? I don't think so. I, they said today that they're reevaluating that Ugh. situation. I know. I know. I would. I feel so bad for that actress, like, because she looks amazing, and I feel like she's gonna do a great job. I really hope it comes out and makes Buku bucks, or at least she gets praise, and they'll be like, "Oh, we should keep her around." Maybe mm-hmm. I hope that movie doesn't make Buku bucks <laughs> no. <laughs> for separate reasons, but um, I, I mean, everyone else that worked on it, like, I want mm-hmm. it to do good for them, and like, again, Ezra Miller, you know, issues, not a fan. But if Ezra's going to put in the work and better PJ, themselves, PJ, you know, PJ, I, no, you know, I don't want to give absolutely not. I don't want to give someone no opportunity to turn their life around. But uh, also, well, we should hold people accountable. There we go. I was like, you, they they hmm. committed actual crimes, and they're getting the rich person, rich right. white person treatment of they can go to rehab instead of actually yeah. facing time for their crimes. And I'm not yeah. here for this. I think it's bullshit. No, like, I'm. You. I'm all, you know, we should all be allowed to be redeemed with within reason. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's more, it's more DC themselves. And again, I'll attack, you know, the the yeah. fat cats in their tower. Just what's what's easier and what can we ignore? Yeah. Meanwhile, you're saying, you know, Supergirl's role could be in danger. Leslie Grace was yeah. canned as Batgirl and Batgirl was scrapped right. after practically being done starring people like Brendan Fraser and Michael Keaton and yeah. JK Simmons. I mean, whoa, how bad could it have been? Yeah. Right. Which the guy Peter, who's like James Gunn's, you know, second in command. Yeah. Yes. 
he said today that the Batgirl film was unreleasable and yeah. he admires them for making that decision to cancel it. And I'm like, I'm calling bullshit on this. <laughs> oh, but they want to work with the directors again because that's not going to be awkward at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a bullshit. Mm-hmm. I just think, look, I, I am I believe in a redemption arc, but I think you actually have to work for it, which is what I don't think Ezra Miller is being held to. And that's why it bothers me. No, that's uh, fair. And like and Ezra Miller's in a place of, of privilege of being able to come back from it without yeah. having done any of the work. Yeah. And I think if this movie hadn't been almost done and releasing and supposed to be a blockbuster, I think there would have been more yeah. major consequences yeah. right away. It's almost like you can get away with anything if enough money's on the line. Right. So, and, and I know they're saying, oh, we'd love to keep Ezra on as the Flash. It could happen. I don't believe that. I, even if it makes decent amount of money i think ezra's done i think they're not saying it because they don't want to damage the movie like no one's going to want to go if they know ezra isn't going to be the flash anymore afterwards Mm -hmm. but like i don't believe that they're going to keep ezra on i wonder if that's what some of those reshoots were about Mm -hmm. because it is the flashpoint story it is the end of that version of the universe so at least they're being smart in that way in that They're not just, you know, poofing it away. They're actually going to have a plot within a movie that explains why it's, you know, history. But (laughs) it does a full recast at the end of the movie where the flashpoint makes Flash into a new person. Yeah, I'm like, what is Grant Gustin at the end? It's just Grant Gustin. (laughs) (laughs) What if it ends? Barry stops running through time, goes in his bathroom and looks in the mirror and screams, but we don't see what his face looks like. And then they have, you know, years (laughs) to figure out who it's going to be. It's just filmed from behind. It's yeah, just, it's just Iris. hands on the side. Ah! It's just Iris walking in and being like, "Who are you?" Yeah, Ezra has no idea this would happen. They're sitting there like, "Oh, I didn't feel <laughs> that." Either that, or it's it's the new Flash actor reveal where that's yes. the last shot. The camera pans over. Uh, what do you good. mean, Iris? What's wrong? And then then Chris he does Pratt. the mirror thing. I would actually oh love if we had it's Chris like, Pratt. like a Doctor Who reveal, but yeah. like if you didn't know who it was going to be, that would I'd be great. That. Okay. If this doesn't happen, I don't even know what's up, but that's a great, that's great. <laughs> it's again, it's just that panel from um, the uh, the super, the Justice League animated series where Lex Luthor pulls off the Barry's mask and then is like, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> so our next comment is from Dallas. He says, I Dallas! mostly have no faith that any of it is going to work out, but I love the implications of doing a story with Damien. Yeah. yeah, we we've acknowledged <laughs> that people have not a lot of faith, but yeah. a lot of hope. Oh, uh, yeah, I get it, Dallas. We're all hurting. <laughs> Polly and Alex Jaffe were yelling at us to drop the e. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Jaffe. <laughs> you would never correct us ever. <laughs> um, and then we have Scandal Savage. Love that name says, I'm excited, but very nervous about the Bat family. It's long past time they be included, but I have so little faith in how they'll be included. I'm worried about them all, but especially Damien and by association, Talia and Jason Todd for different reasons. The authority though. And they're very (laughs) excited for that. Okay. Let's talk about the authority. Okay. Oh my God. Are we going to get Midnighter? (laughs) We've got to, right? He's one of the main authority characters. (laughs) Can I, can you do me a favor? Yes. What is the authority? No, I was going to ask you. (laughs) I have no idea. I never heard of them before this announcement. I did read Superman. Really? Steve, John and Joey have talked about it on the show so many times. You have I don't listen to them. I read Superman (laughs) and the authority recently by Grant Morrison, and I still couldn't tell you what the authority is. They open their mouths, and it's like Peanuts parents just talking to me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, the authority is um, this sort of... (laughs) <laughs> but you haven't heard them talk about the authority despite the fact that i've been on the show heard with them, them way mention less it, but than i know here's what a, it is here's the thing though when something heated. like m- with major deep mm. roots in dc yes. history comes comes up in conversation yes. and it's this like you can you can taste the history in the mm. air yeah i tune okay out because so the, it's too daunting for me fair so the authority is actually 
not originally a DC property. It is a property that DC bought. It was sort of like an anti-DC that existed for a while. So the authority was when, you know, these, these really subversive writers created a group that was kind of Suicide Squad-like, and it included, as they made it, the gay version of Batman and Superman, aka Midnighter and Apollo. But eventually DC actually bought the authority and then brought them into the DC universe and thus making Midnight or Apollo actually meet Batman and Superman and it being super weird that there's your gay versions running around in your own <laughs> version. Um, but so the authority was like really subversive, really like anti-authority. So it was called the authority, but it was like the, a bunch of punk, punk ass kids. I don't know how yeah. else to put it. Didn't, didn't they have a book recently like Justice League yeah. versus the authority or Superman something? Like and that? The authority. Superman Superman and out. the authority. Wasn't That's it Grant it. Morrison, TJ? Yeah, that was Grant Moore. That's the one I read. They also like spinned out into another title. So yeah. that might have been what you're thinking of, Steve. I'm not sure. Well, they, um, and they have done like many over the years, apparently, but they've never gone back since they were bought by DC. They've never gone back to their subversive roots, sadly. So right. they've been much more like Suicide Squad. I, In- I like wouldn't recommend the one I read, the Superman of the Authority, but the art was beautiful and it had like really hot daddy Superman for some <laughs> reason. So, you know, read it for that. That's In- a... Go ahead. In my defense, though, I just want to go back about a sure. minute. Okay. I've only been reading comics for about 12 years when we started the Talking Comics podcast. Yeah, Joe and John and Bob and Aaron. And this is why I podcast with them mm-hmm. because they've been reading comics for pretty much their from yeah. adolescence on. Yeah. And so, you know, they were there, man. <laughs> now, TJ and I haven't been reading comics no. for that long. Steve, either. I just think of you as like a comic expert for yeah. some reason. I'm not. I am so not that's an expert why I was about surprised. anything. Uh, but well, I, yeah. I really admire and appreciate your perspectives on comics. Yeah, absolutely. So. Thank you. Yeah. And I will say, the only reason I know anything about the authority is because Midnight and Apollo are my OTV and I know everything <laughs> about them. Uh, which is They've so got to be in it. They have to be. Gotta are we re- legitimately like they can't? Midnighter and Apollo, I almost said their only characteristic is being gay. That's not what I mean, but like, <laughs> they, I mean, can't, they can't not be gay in it, is what I'm trying to say. Because that is, I their trust whole story. James Gunn to let them be gay. Let them be gay. Yeah. If we, but they are like also the main character. So are we legit getting like a queer led I can see them like letting it be rated R, going a little darker. Like, I mean, after Peacemaker and James Gunn wrote that, that was yeah, so right. gay. That mm. was like the, one of the gayest superhero things I've seen. But this one would have to be actual, like textual. Yeah, you know I mean, there are like, there are textual sure. queer characters in Peacemaker. Yeah. Peacemaker is like implied with a line, but there's actual other queerness in the yeah. show. So like, they, again, this has to be the main character. Yes, so that's yes. the part I'm like, because gotcha. they can't, they can't do that story and them not be queer. They can't unqueer Midnighter and Apollo. Yeah. It's not possible. I would love to see it like the love story unfolding throughout the first film. Like, I don't want to start with them being a married couple. Yeah. Like, Steve, do you know? Be, do you know be... the love story of Midnighter and Apollo? No, I've never read anything Midnighter. I need you. To, I need you to do this because I want to read all, the Steve Orlando run. See, re- read the Steve Orlando run. Yeah, read through good. the Midnighter and then read Midnighter and Apollo because it is the most romantic story in the whole DC universe. Where's um, it from? Where someone says like, "Oh, I would know him from behind and the back, of his, the back of his head." No, anywhere. no, 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 no. The, the it's about Dick Grayson, and it's not yeah. the back of his head. He says it is his but, ass. I don't, the butt but I, I swear <laughs> someone says back ahead at some no. point no i'll say this it will be it'll be nice if at least one of these big two studios making these superhero movies wasn't afraid to embrace the queer community yeah, I know. marvel has been such cowards i agree about all of that stuff and i know that they've made little steps and little headway no but it's a it's not enough yeah and b all of it is just them like watching on pointed toes yeah. to see how people react. And they're like, oh, we didn't do it because it wasn't wasn't good in testing. Like, yeah. who the hell did you invite to this thing? Yeah, the, the MAGA hat wearers that you invited to testing didn't like it. Shock. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, let's let's be honest. Found it. Okay. I'm not crazy. First so, of all, uh, we were talking about something actually important. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> Midnighter right. says- 
Uh, sorry, Apollo says to Midnighter, please, do you think I don't recognize the back of your head? Oh. Huh? So they're very similar lines, though. Okay, anyway, okay. please continue your, your very important No, 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 I, lo- I love that you looked it up. <laughs> no, Midnighter and Apollo are the couple that would that literally go to hell and back for each other. I love them so fucking much, and they better do them justice or I riot. <laughs> like, just straight up. Um, but I, again, like, I, I think they... I Announcing the authority would be like announcing the JLQ like there that is an inherently queer story I can't imagine a non-queer version of it so I'm sitting here going for real <laughs> like <laughs> for real these guys <laughs> I mean and, we love um, Steve Orlando I'd love to see him brought in the writer's room for yeah. that movie Steve, to like focus friend, on their storyline my personal That'd friend Steve Orlando yeah well, I suppose <laughs> Tom um, King is in the writer's room so like my personal enemies <laughs> No, yeah. okay. just okay. to uh <laughs> just to follow up from before uh super sure. quick because we yeah. were there and then we bounced off of it but you asked me before the batman part two yes. comes out october 3rd 2025 okay so okay. it is and, we are getting superman and batman the same right event. and then hey. joker uh folly adieu or whatever it's called is october 4th 2024 and the uh jj abrams and tanahasi coats superman is still yeah. happening in the Elseworlds label. Good. Yes. I'm excited That's about that. That's what I thought. Good. I'm I still want a Robin mm-hmm. in the Batman 2. <laughs> I hope this Damien isn't like a consolation prize. Do you yeah. think it was interesting? I mean, I'm sure it's it's part of the Elseworld stuff, right. but, and maybe that's why they didn't include it, but the Penguin yeah. wasn't mentioned anywhere. Mm. In huh. I know they're filming it. Yeah, no, yeah. it's definitely happening. Yeah, I, that is interesting. I, just I thought it was bizarre that that wasn't but they might be planning a, a separate presentation yeah. about the Elseworld stuff I mean I think- Gotham Knights wasn't in there either <laughs> Gotham Knights the show that only TJ and I are excited for like, someone asked him about it on Twitter and he just replied no I guess they asked like do you have a comment on that and he says no <laughs> He's like, I will, do not want the brand to be affiliated. With we all that, know it's going to get canceled after one season. I know, but we are gonna <laughs> we are gonna relish in that season. We're gonna soak in it. <laughs> are we gonna cover that show? We yes. have to. We said, said <laughs> we I'll do that do show with you. Yeah, you want to come on? Please, yeah. coming on. Let's just let's get it. let's get drunk and talk about Gotham Knights. That was so funny. <laughs> I want to see Misha Collins' as two face. <laughs> <laughs> just go on Twitter. He's posting plenty of stuff. Oh, I know. I love it. He looks exactly like Castiel in everything that I've seen. It's so funny that he doesn't look any different at all. Amazing. Amazing. I'm excited for them to barely mark his face at all. (laughs) I like him. I do too. He's cool. So I have two more comments. And then after those, Steve, if you want to like run us through the projects we haven't touched on yet, that'd be great. Yep. So second to last comment is from Ron. He says, excited to have Robin, especially Damien, and having hope for a DC fan is amazing. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. It, I feel the same way, Ron. <laughs> like <laughs> I genuinely, I mean, I've been so like, I don't think it's anything good's gonna come. And this announcement happened, and I'm like, JK, I'm back in. <laughs> I am a hundred percent on board. <laughs> Can I say something about that super quick before we move sure. on to the next comment? Yeah. So before before i you know we learned about everything Mm -hmm. my my thought was we were gonna get five maybe six things yeah and we were gonna know about like three of them yeah right because we've heard a little thing whispers and you know pre-production schedules and crap like that here and there and so i wasn't exactly like i was excited but i wasn't anticipating anything yeah and then we go to this thing And it was one thing after another where it was, you know, the authority and Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow based on Tom King. And I was like, oh, like you're announcing 10 things. Yeah. And most of them are from out of left field. Now, now I'm excited. Yeah. Now, now this is something to actually really pay attention to. And I get worked up about this stuff because not only do I have to work in it and pay attention to it whether i want to or not Mm -hmm. but i love the bullshit that comes with this stuff i love the castings i love the shakeups of who's directing and who's doing what yeah and like as much as the fandom can be disastrous Mm -hmm. it's still a lot of fun to kind of watch the circus yeah yeah that's half the fun 100 percent, and the like they're really cool DC fans too. Uh, oh, absolutely. Specifically you all. 
Um, and listeners, I'm pointing <laughs> to you. You can't see me, but like, I, I, yeah, it's fun both. It's fun to celebrate with the people who are chill and it's kind of fun to watch the dude bros get sad. I, you know, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Their tears feed me. <laughs> so last comment comes from Sherry underscore sassy. And they say, I hope to see Dick, Tim, Jason, and Cass in the Batman movie. I would love Mm -hmm. to see more of the Bat family. I also hope that the new movies and shows are going to be epilepsy friendly. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's important. Yeah, Yeah. those are the other ones. The movies that have have been coming out were not. Oh, my God. And they also want every single character uh, in that first Batman movie, just like me. I don't think we're going to get everyone in that movie. I just, that would be such a cluster. Um, but I could totally see one of these shows, um, launching all the characters kind of the way that the Disney plus shows have been, you know, adding depth to the world. I could see that. Make like a bat family show. Make a bat family show. Anthology or something. You understand how feral the entire fandom would go if you made a bat family show? Like, do you understand James Gunn? (laughs) He doesn't. <laughs> I think he does because he announced Damien in the way he did. I think he does know. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's not prepared. We'll find out. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Gunn. <laughs> All right, Steve, what have we missed? What have we not touched on yet? Any let of me the see. shows. <laughs> Let me uh, let me pick up my notes I here. I think we hit literally all the movies and none of the shows yet. Yeah. Well, that's a- you've got... Oh, um. You've got Creature Commandos. Oh, yes. Coming out. Weasel in it. It looks like it. And it also looks like it has Frankenstein Agents of Shade. (gasps) So I'm automatically watching this. That's another Jeff Lemire run. That is absolutely so much fun. And it's animated? Uh, Yeah, this is going to be an animated series called Creature Commandos. Do we think? Sorry. I was it's it's monsters yeah. doing doing the espionage action thing. Do we think that the shows or maybe we know and I've just missed it. Are the mm. shows going to be like the Disney Plus are they in canon or are they not in canon? Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> Wait, it's here's always here's the, the thing. Give us your expert thing. info. Right. So James Gunn has come out and I think this is the one this is the one time that they really screwed up with this whole reboot. James Gunn came out and he's like, it's all going to be connected, man. Like the movies, the shows, the, the video games are going to be connected. They're all going to, they're all going to flow. And I'm like, because (laughs) video games take a very long time to make. They take anywhere from four to five years. Yeah and sometimes more and delays and crunch and all of those things. Yeah. Game trends change that you could be building your game one way. And then all of a sudden nobody's interested in that style of gameplay anymore. And you have to switch gears halfway through your project or else it's going to bomb that sort of thing. So I think saying that all of this stuff is going to be really like woven together tightly mm-hmm. might have been a bit of mistake like a little ambitious on their part okay. this is where i was saying that i kind of hope that they keep things relatively simple mm-hmm. yeah but i don't know that they're going to do that because i feel like they feel they have to make up for lost time mm. um i you gotta crawl before you can walk yeah. right and and so i feel like maybe that was a a weird way to go anyway okay but the shows, though, how do, do we feel like the shows are? I mean, he implied that everything that wasn't labeled Elseworlds would be in that universe. Including animated shows? Because that feels yeah. weird. I feel like that's what was implied. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> it is unclear. Until they start yeah. rolling this stuff yeah. out and we actually see the interconnectivity, it's going to be very difficult to gauge what that even means. And it might even once we see it. Yeah, <laughs> I hope they keep it pretty loose, like you're saying. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. need anything major to connect this animated show to the new Batman movie. No, no, like, no. just let no. it exist, and then if it does well, like you know, put some okay. more references in I mean, there. But I guess the reason I say all this, <laughs> I have a motive behind why I asked because I'm going to skip ahead. There is a Booster Gold series coming out, please. Yeah. yeah, and we have not talked about this too much. I think I've implied it one time in the show, but I am a big booster gold blue beetle shipper and i'm like 
there's a Blue Beetle movie and there's a Booster <laughs> Gold show. I need to know the universes are connected. That's all I need. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that they're planning for Blue Beetle to be in this Booster oh, Gold thing. Yes! Oh, okay, good. Look, I don't, don't I know. cash the check, but I'm, I'm saying I'm that cashing I'm, it. I'm jumping. <laughs> and again, they uh, didn't call it an else world, so like Blue Beetle would okay. be in this world. Well, here's my here's my idea now that I'm thinking about it. What if yeah. what if all of the animated series are within their own animated okay. universe? Yeah. And the shows can intermingle with like the live action stuff yeah. is the live action stuff. The animated stuff is the animated stuff. I, like I do agree that I think it would be weird if the animated stuff mixed in with the light, like somewhere there's a, there's a mm-hmm. cartoon version of uh, Frankenstein agent of shade running around and they're going to reference him in a movie. But yeah. they also said that whoever's voicing the characters in the animated film in the animated stuff is going to play them in the live action version. So it might be somewhat connected. So maybe Weasel. they are crossing all of it over. <laughs> well, because, okay, so they have done this before. Nobody remembers this, but it, uh, anyone remember the Ray TV show that they yeah, I was going to say, in Arrow, the Vixen and Ray. Yeah, those yeah. things were uh, part of the Arrowverse, but they were animated shows. And then when they had the big crossover, they were live action versions of the animated And then the characters. show, the cartoons got like retconned at one point. I you know yeah. what? Fair. <laughs> they gotta the do something still there. Yeah. yeah. They gotta do something to stand out from the Marvel stuff. So maybe this is what they're trying to do. Yeah. I either way, it does honestly, the only thing I want to know is that I can because look, look, it's not gonna be queer, but I can queer bait myself with booster gold and blue field. <laughs> I said I, in the I said in the talking comics chat today, all I want is a Falcon and Winter Soldier, but blue blue beetle and uh and booster gold. That's all I want. Yeah. Give me blue and gold. Next next announcement. Give me blue and gold. Yeah. I, I want really... the animated stuff in the same world as live action. I do want it, but I also don't need the references. So like just yeah. just let me know that they're in the same world. And I don't care if we get any yeah. major connected tissue. And right. please, please God, don't make me have to play a video game to understand what's happening in the show. <laughs> I don't yeah, even and care. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, true. No, I was gonna say that's the that's the other thing, right? Like <laughs> you're 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 gating a community of people that are not gamers, or or what kind of games are you going to be building with these characters that you're going to want the barrier yeah. to entry to be really small, <laughs> and then you just come out with these games that you know people yeah. that play all the time are like, are you what? Like, do I paid you, $70 for this? Do y'all remember between X-Men 1, uh, X-Men 2 and 3, when they wrote out Nightcrawler in a video game? Yes. Because <laughs> I've never forgotten that, that the, he's literally inexplicably gone in the movie, and the mm-hmm. only thing, only reason you know what happened to him is if you played the X-Men movie tie-in game. Yep. All right, you want to run through <laughs> these other things real, real quick? Please do, please do. All right, so we also have Waller coming with uh, starring Viola Davis. This series features Team Peacemaker and will be written by uh, Crystal Henry, who did the Watchmen series, which was excellent. Awesome. Uh, And and Jeremy Carver uh, of Supernatural fame. Which is concerning. (laughs) Yes. Um, But this is going to take place between Peacemaker seasons one and two. Yeah. So, that's so does where that the mean? Falls. Are we assuming we're going to get Waller before we get Peacemaker season two? I'm presumably, maybe. Yeah. I just I was or, expecting I mean, to get Peacemaker season two soon because it's been like to a do year. it that way. Like, I mean, yeah. they they might have been. Uh, we don't know how many episodes Waller is, right? So that's like, true. it could be a lot. It could be a four episode mini. Yeah. You know, we have no idea. Um, they could release it. Uh, I mean, they won't, but I was going to say they could release it as, you know, like webisodes or something, but they won't do that. <laughs> what is um, this, 2008? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, so what, I mean, I'll watch Viola Davis in Oh, anything. absolutely. I think oh, she's brilliant. Sure. I love her as that character. So yeah, that's cool. Um, and then we mentioned Booster Gold before. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lanterns is mm. actually happening. Uh, is this, this was- animated? Or no? No, this is live action. That's exciting. Yeah. So this was up in the air. This was, you know, in development hell for a really long time. 
Uh, this is going to be an enormous TV event series following yeah. the intergalactic cops, John Stewart and Hal Jordan, as they uncover a dark mystery. Do we think there's a chance we get to see other lanterns in this? What do we Does think? this have anything to do with the show that was in development with the cast already in place? Or is this different? They were making a show with Guy Gardner. As yeah, that's the, separate. Uh, yeah, because uh, it had and, like Finn Whitrock. Is that how he says it? He was from American Horror Story. He's really yeah. cute. I don't know if this is him. Probably, probably not. Probably not. I don't. I don't think we know anything about this yet. They haven't okay. announced um, okay. who's going to play John Stewart. Who's going to play Hal Jordan? I think. I, I think this is just yes. We're doing it. You're going to have to wait. Yeah. Uh, for more details, kind of thing. And I know it's focused on them, but do you think we could get the other lanterns? Is my question. Oh yeah, I absolutely okay, like. I, I think you'll you'll get uh, Jess. I think yes. you'll get. Um, Bad. God, what's the squirrel lantern's name? Oh my God, squirrel lantern. <laughs> I don't Bees remember. Bees or something like yes. that from Super Pets. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, different one. Um, different I would. Squirrel. I would absolutely. Speaking of things that would make me go feral, Jess and Baz on screen would. I would die. <laughs> yeah, this this has the potential. Like they say, it's a TV event series. So this is something yeah. that if it does well could end up getting a second season or a third yeah. and they can do the whole you know space Lantern cop core. thing yeah and if they were smart and i know aaron will hate me for saying this and i don't here. it's okay <laughs> i know but i i don't know and i i don't even know if i want this but if they want to do it they can do far sector oh. in dc else worlds <gasps> I want this. I, I love Far Sector. I would lose my mind for that, but yeah. it would have to be the right people behind yeah. it. And they would have to throw all the money I at that series. Would, like a like a like an Edgar Wright or somebody like that doing Far Sector. I would want to see um someone like um I believe her name is uh Gina Prince Bythewood. Yeah. Who did uh The Woman King? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, and cool. um, oh my God, the Charlize Theron, um, Greg, uh, Greg Rucka movie. What the hell? Mm. I Robin always Blanc? forget the name of this. It's a mm. Netflix movie. Oh, Netflix. Oh, uh, oh, Old Gods? Old Gods? No. No, the newer one where it's raining. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Hold on I know second. what you're talking about. The Old Guard. That's the old what guard. I said. Oh, oh I that's think not I said what gods. I was thinking of. Old Guard is what yeah. I meant to say. <laughs> um, I think the people that, that made the Old Guard could do it, but you would have to get... Uh, yeah. You would have you would have to get the team. Yeah. You know, um, Jemison would need to be a part of the writer's room. Yeah. That sort oh, of I thing. agree. hundred percent. I was just thinking, I don't know. I th the vibe oh of God. like a last night at Soho was what I was thinking would be uh, fun for it. I love you that know? Movie. Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet. Oh She'd my be God. Amazing. I would Yo. Go for it. Yo. Oh, you know what? Ryan Johnson could do it. <laughs> Reunite those two. <laughs> So R.I.P. other Green Lantern show is what yeah, I Yeah, we don't even care anymore. We just went Far Sector, apparently. Um, People went from, got, no, it's uh, happening, to it's gone. I, I got one more for you. Uh, there's also Paradise Lost. Hmm. What is coming that? out? Uh, this is set in Themyscira, and that's the home of the Amazons oh. and birthplace of Wonder Woman. Uh, this drama focuses on the genesis and political intrigue of an island of all women. Speaking of things that have to be gay, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, my God. Oh, is <laughs> There's this, no way. I mean, you need gay Jenkins. and you need uh, the kangaroos that are there. What the hell are please. they called? Oh, my God, please. <laughs> I got to find out. Want. They have a name. That's all I want. <laughs> Patty Jenkins was talking about a show based around the island for a long time. So yep. I wonder if this is like a version of that or if it's like a whole new, new thing. Like all yeah. new. I don't, I don't know. know. Kangas. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Kangas and Kangas and queerness. That's what Kangas we want for queerness. Paradise Lost. If, okay, it better be really gay, otherwise I'm not going to be. I know. Interested. Women and swords, man. That's all. Oh god. I just don't know anything about them. And that's okay. I, I think know. that I think that's kind of exciting, right? Because like, again, some of the MCU movies where we didn't know a lot about the characters were some of the best ones. True. Yeah. No. There are a lot of relationships happening on that island, yeah. and there is a lot of stuff with uh hippolyta and you know mm. others on the island i think oh, yeah. it would be really interesting i hope they do an all-female cast for that yes, show please. and really remain true and uh -huh. have it be that way through and through don't give me 
these, you know, off island scenes with, you know, yeah. dude man, uh, you know, yeah, finding if, the barrier I, and breaking it through. And right. If I, I see a man, it better be because they're about to kill him. <laughs> well, just they could do all female writers, directors. Yeah, like, so it could be really, please. really great. Oh my God, please. Yeah. I wonder if it'll be the same actors from the Wonder Woman movie. Oh, I don't think so. The rest of no. the island, you mean? Probably not. Yeah, like like her mother or whoever the heck yeah. was there. Nope, I don't think you're gonna see any of them. I think it's gonna be all new people. Okay. I, I would bet so too. If you're gonna if you're gonna do a reboot and you you've gone through the trouble of pushing out this movie that resets everything, you you gotta reset it. You gotta. You, but they like, just said that Gal Gadot could come back today. They're so lying. Like, they're lying because she has a cameo coming once she's out once the flash is out she's done <laughs> they haven't put that movie out you don't know that that cameo is going to be in there true yeah. true yeah but I look at look at henry cavill reason. okay <laughs> there's no way they're all going to go the cavill way so i'll say anyone who's in a movie that's coming out until the superman movie like i don't i can't see them saying oh they're not they're not going to be around after this movie until it comes out and fails yeah. and then they'll be done. And they'll be like, actually, that was their last movie. Surprise. That, that's a, the only reason I'm worried about Blue Beetle is that it's one of the leftover like projects. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm worried it's going to come out and go and that'll be it. But I, yeah. I hope they keep him around because he's I hope so an too. excellent casting. People have got to show up for Blue Beetle. Because, I will show up tw- yeah. 12,000 yeah. times. I love the, Blue Beetle. Uh, the news cycle for that movie has not been kind. Yeah, the the they're they'll they're building that movie on the back of having uh one of the stars of Cobra Kai, yeah, play Jaime and like that's fantastic and I think yeah. he's great in Cobra Kai and I'm very much looking forward to seeing him in the role yeah. but like all the behind the scenes shots the poster leaves almost nothing to the imagination mm-hmm. they it's they need to put some effort behind it yeah and if they focus down on all of these new announcements, all of these other movies are just going to come and go. And it's going to be a real shame. We talked to the writer of um, of Blue Beetle Graduation Day and just to hear how how excited he is for this movie and have like Latinx representation in DC movies. I just, we need this one to do well. So, you know. My hope is like, they're like they're looking at it as you know this character hasn't been introduced yet mm-hmm. this is something that we can salvage and so. use yeah. for what's to come yeah, yeah. and I unlike so. Batgirl it's pretty self-contained right especially so like- I didn't even think of this but especially if the flash comes out first mm-hmm. and the reboot happens yeah and then you get Blue Beetle then it will technically be that would be in that new universe yeah yeah you grandfather yeah. him in yeah through the loophole that is the flashpoint. The flashpoint. I've done it. You've I've got done it. it. You Cut saved me my check. Blue Beetle. You did it. <laughs> I, I hope so. I'm going to go 12 times, everybody. So show up for Blue Beetle. <laughs> Aquaman 2 is after yeah. the Flash. Wild. And that they that just said <laughs> that they are planning on making a third one. I'm, so I mean, I'm not surprised, actually, because I think those, uh, apart from like his parts in Justice League or whatever, I do feel like those stories are fairly contained, big as they are in the ocean. So I feel like you could keep going with those without them interacting too much with the main yeah. stories. Also, Jason Momoa, I just love him. Yeah. But if <laughs> Ben know. Affleck was filming a cameo for Aquaman too, I bet it's. I mean, I mean, maybe he just won't even be in it. But it's like, yeah, I bet it's weird. cut. I bet it's uh, gone. Yeah, I would be very surprised to see that. They just use the cameo, but they put the new Batman's head over <laughs> his With the Snapchat <laughs> filter. Him. Yeah, the Snapchat <laughs> filter, exactly. And it's suddenly the new Batman. Give him a mustache. <laughs> yeah, just a yeah. little like. <laughs> just a handlebar mustache. So show up for Blue Beetle. Yes, show up for My Blue thought Beetle. is, even if they're like thinking that they're not going to make another Blue Beetle, if it makes enough money, yeah. they will change their mind. So. I think like, I think that... DC as a like the publishing side of DC putting out graduation day and doing it as the first like fully released in Spanish simultaneously. Like they're doing a lot behind this character. So they obviously yeah. must a little bit believe in it. So I'm kind of hoping like that will be enough to drive people who maybe otherwise wouldn't have gone to go see it. Yeah. I'm hoping the trade will come out around the time the movie is premiering. That would be so smart. Yeah. Hmm. It's almost like marketing people are smart. And playing this stuff. I well, <laughs> some of them are. <laughs> some of them. I, some, Bowl. Sometimes. Bowl. <laughs> we love you. 
All right. Well, I know you're out there hoping it's Dick with Damien too. I know <laughs> you and I are hoping together. We're all hoping for Dick. <laughs> we are all just chasing that Dick. <laughs> Well, thank you, Steve, for coming on to yeah. dissect all of this with us. You're oh very God, welcome. Yes. Thank you for asking. Yeah, it was so it was... fun. Yeah, I'm anytime. glad that we had this conversation now because I still have like the fire in me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if by the time we get to Thursday, I'm just going to let everybody else talk and be like, eh. <laughs> you just you just go uh, as per what I said on Gotham Outsiders. Yeah, yeah, Outsiders. just listen to the <laughs> Gotham Outsiders podcast. It'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> now, right, I'm excited. Well. I hope other people get excited. It's an exciting time for all of this stuff. There's so many unknown factors happening with this reboot yeah. and everything. And there's still so much that we don't know about it. You yeah. know, it's it's very easy to look at the list and be like, do they know what they're doing? We don't yeah. have enough pieces of the puzzle yet. Puzzle yet. Yeah. And maybe so, they don't either. Who knows? Maybe well, they just- don't. Like people were saying, it's great to be excited again. Yeah. And even if I'm yeah. not excited, which I am, it would still be really fun just to see everyone else really yeah. excited. Yeah. yeah. I think being, uh, I, I said this earlier in our group chat too, being a DC movie fan is like having a cat. Like, will they scratch my <laughs> eyes out like two to three times a day? Probably. Will I still be excited to see their little toe beans? Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, J J L Q disassemble. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Gotham Outsiders. You can find me, Chris, on Twitter at the Myth of Psyche, where I talk about feminism, psychology, and Batman, of course. But you can also find me on my new show at Thirsty Untune over on the Talking Comics feed where Bronwyn and I review webtoons and drink wine and also review romance novels. You can also find me writing reviews at talkingcomics.com and I am now accepting consulting clients. So if you need someone to do sensitivity reading or consult on psychology or queer identity, I'm your person. You can also find my co-host TJ. At TroyFin2 on Twitter, where I talk about books, gay things, gay books and all sorts of things, including Batman pretty often, way more than I used to. Uh, And I recently became an official librarian. So you can find all sorts of book reviews that I post just for fun. A lot of advanced uh, reviews of books that haven't come out yet. So if you're looking for a nice gay read, please hit me up. You could also find me talking on other podcasts just here and there if you search my name on any podcast service provider that you listen to. And you can find us both talking about Batman all the time at the Gotham Outsiders. So join us next time. Same bat time, same bat place.